In an era where unmanned aerial systems have transformed modern warfare, the Swedish Air Force, in collaboration with the Swedish Defense Material Administration, Saab, and industry partners, has introduced the Loke Counter Drone System, a groundbreaking counter unmanned aircraft system developed and tested in a mere 84 days. Completed on March 17, 2025, Loke addresses the urgent need to counter small, low flying, and autonomous drones that evade traditional air defenses due to their low cost, minimal signatures, and agile operation. The rapid proliferation of drones, driven by their accessibility and battlefield utility, has created a critical capability gap in air defense. Traditional systems optimized for manned aircraft and missiles are economically unsustainable against low-cost commercial drones, as seen in conflicts like Ukraine. Loke's development was spurred by this reality, aiming to deliver a modular, mobile, and scalable CUS that spans the entire kill chain, detection, classification, command, control, and engagement. Initiated as an industrial demonstration, the project transitioned into a time-limited development cycle, leveraging existing Saab technologies to deliver a functional system to Swedish Air Force combat units by late 2025. Major General Jonas Wickman, chief of the Swedish Air Force, emphasized Loke's development as a testament to deviating from standard processes to meet urgent threats. While Carl Johan Bergholm, senior vice president at Saab, credited its speed to repurposing proven systems like the Giraffe 1X radar and Trackfire remote weapon station. At the heart of Loke's detection capability is the Giraffe 1X, a 150-kilogram 3D multi-mission radar designed to track low, slow, and small targets, including quadcopters and small UAVs, with an effective range of approximately 4 kilometers for such threats. Its drone tracker capability distinguishes drones from birds, minimizing false alarms, and supports simultaneous air surveillance, ground-based air defense, and counter-rocket, artillery, and mortar functions. The radar's compact design allows mounting on mobile platforms like pickup trucks, trailers, or fixed structures, with 360-degree scanning every second and automatic tracking for seamless target acquisition. Its versatility as a standalone CUAS or gap filler within larger GBAD systems, combined with optional sea surface surveillance and command and control integration, makes it a cornerstone of Loke's effectiveness. The engagement component relies on the Trackfire RWS, originally developed for naval platforms like the Combat Boat 90 and deployed by Sweden and Finland. Equipped with a 7.62mm FN Magig and a 12.7mm M2 Browning, Trackfire features a stabilized, independent line-of-sight system, enabling continuous target tracking during recoil. Its digital fire control system, with day and night vision, a Class 1 iSafe laser rangefinder, effective beyond 4,000 meters, and 3D prediction capability ensures precise engagements. The system's human-machine interface provides ergonomic control, allowing operators to switch weapons, integrate non-lethal effectors like dazzlers or smoke grenades, and share data across platforms. Loke's lightweight command and control system, based on short-range air defense principles, coordinates the kill chain, ensuring rapid decision-making and interoperability with Swedish Air Force systems. The system's mobility is a key strength, operating across two vehicles, one for detection and one for engagement, and functioning during redeployment between locations, such as air bases. A red container with antennas, likely for electronic reconnaissance or jamming, adds non-kinetic capabilities, though specifics remain undisclosed. Loke's modularity allows integration of additional sensors or effectors, ensuring adaptability to evolving threats. Within the Swedish Armed Forces, it complements existing drone detection and disruption systems, particularly for airbase protection, with full combat unit integration planned by the end of 2025. The project's 84-day timeline, managed by the Luftstridskolen, Ledningstridskolen, Fliegstaben, and Markstridskolen, with input from Norbotten Air Wing, reflects a pragmatic approach. Photos of the system, mounted on pallets with elastic tie-downs and powered by extension cords, underscore its Frankenstein's monster aesthetic, functional over polished.
This improvisation, while effective, raises questions about long-term reliability and NATO standardization, given Sweden's recent membership. Loke's development aligns with NATO's push for enhanced air defense, and its modularity supports interoperability, but its rapid assembly may require refinement to meet Alliance protocols fully. Strategically, Loke addresses the cost-benefit paradox of countering cheap drones with expensive munitions, a lesson drawn from Ukraine's drone-centric warfare. Its scalability and mobility make it suitable for military applications, such as protecting air bases and troops, and civilian uses, like securing airports or critical infrastructure against unauthorized drones, a growing concern in Sweden. With Saab's global reach and rising European demand for CUS, Loke holds export potential, potentially strengthening Sweden's position as the world's 13th largest arms exporter. However, challenges persist. The Giraffe 1X's 4km range for small targets may be insufficient against longer range or higher altitude drones, and its performance in urban environments where line of sight is obstructed remains untested. Trackfire's kinetic approach, while precise, may be less cost-effective against drone swarms compared to non-kinetic options like jamming or lasers, which Loke may incorporate but currently underutilizes. Technological obsolescence is a significant risk, as drone advancements outpace traditional development cycles. Loke's modularity mitigates this, but its reliance on existing components like track fire may limit its ability to counter next-generation autonomous swarms or electronically hardened UAVs without substantial upgrades. Training and doctrinal integration also pose hurdles. Sweden's broader drone programs highlight a lack of operational understanding and training, and Loke's rapid deployment may strain the Air Force's ability to develop tactics by late 2025. Economically, while Loke avoids the pitfalls of high-cost interceptors, its kinetic effectors could incur operational costs in high-volume scenarios, necessitating a balance with emerging low-cost solutions like the Kroeger 100 CUAS, which uses software-driven aerodynamics. Critically, the establishment narrative, amplified by Saab and Swedish officials, celebrates Loke's speed and innovation, but may downplay these limitations. The system's Lego-like assembly, while effective for rapid prototyping, risks being perceived as a stopgap rather than a polished solution, potentially undermining confidence in export markets or NATO contexts. Sweden's procurement challenges, exemplified by four-year delays in other drone programs, suggest that Loke's success is an exception, not a systemic fix. Sustained innovation will require addressing bureaucratic inefficiencies and prioritizing training to ensure Loke's battlefield impact. Nevertheless, its development sets a precedent for agile defense solutions, offering a model for other nations grappling with the drone threat.